It's time for Trader Chat and Flynn Goward is in the house and Flynn, they're odds on to win the title, but is is it not buying money at five to six? Liverpool, five to six to win the league on the basis of what we've seen over the weekend. City disgracing themselves against Leicester. Liverpool barely out of a canter to beat Arsenal. It's over, is it? You sound very posh, Johnny. Uh, I I don't know. Is five to six buying money? uh, Thiago wasn't playing. Um... Mm. I think Liverpool didn't actually play to their best in some respects. They uh, probably can improve. And Arsenal looked mentally like they were men against boys, I thought. And what's, what's worrying as well, if you're looking at outsiders, Man United were so poor against Brighton. Nothing's going to come from left field. And mm-hmm. City are unravelling. Are they not? They are, but then, I think City have got a lot of players out. I think Liverpool were great last night when you see how high they're pressed. Um, Arsenal tried to play against Liverpool like they do every single other team play out from the back which I don't mind as an Arsenal fan to see um, but like I say Liverpool 5-6 to six now some people think that's a great prize and I wouldn't put you off 5-6 to six. Uh, City City. Dri- yeah City drifted to 11-8 to eight, but like I say they've, they've had a lot of players out recently um, mm. some un- un- unrecognisable names in the first team uh, for City recently which is very unlike them not, not, normally got a very deep squad but not at the moment uh, and then we're 22-1 to one bar so a few changes there and then a few changes in the top goal scorer market as well. We saw Vardy score a few goals for Leicester at the weekend. He's now joint 9-2 favourite to be top goal scorer at, at the end of the season. And that's joint with Salah. Um, so Vardy's on four goals. Uh, Salah's on three so far. And then we're 11 to 2 at Bemiang and 9-1 to one by in that market. Um, in terms of the match results of the weekend, it was, it was a positive weekend for us on the football front. Um, obviously, a lot of the Jollies getting beat or drawing their games. Uh, Chelsea drawing to West Brom three, obviously. Um, Spurs draw in with that late drama in that game uh, and then City again beat by Leicester so it was a good, good weekend for us on the football front really. Do you know how the handicap is going because obviously Everton would have been nibbled at in that market uh, it was four teams every team and Everton are probably the team that are confounding nearly all expectations so far how well they're doing. Yeah they are so, so Everton I'm, I'm, there, there was quite a lot of mull before the start of the season that Everton were going to be decent obviously with some of the signings they've made but obviously so far you, you wouldn't expect them to have three wins on the board um, Leicester have found particularly well, but Leicester were really mm. impressive at the weekend. Um, so I think Leicester and Everton are, are going to do well this season, yeah. Let's talk racing. A um, little bit of a doubt maybe about love in terms of the arc at the weekend. Uh, you know, we've all been to Paris and looked for love, but maybe we won't be finding her uh, this weekend because she may not run, judging on recent betting. Yeah, potentially. I mean, she, she has been drifting in the last couple of days, and I don't mind seeing that whatsoever because we've laid love heavily um, anti-post. We laid it at five. What sort of prices? Two. Uh, fives and 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 then nine to two. Um, we we shortened it straight up to nine to four twos. So we put it back out to nine to four this morning. Uh, we're top price enabled seven to four. That is joint with other bookies. But we're top price enabled seven to four. She's a really good winner in our anti post book at the moment, which you wouldn't expect. Um, love and soft sass are the ones that we would want to beat. But if love's not turning up, I won't be complaining. What about the undercard? Um, so when we look at, at the opera, peaceful is our main loser. There we've made that sevens, and that's now fours. So that's another Aidan O'Brien contingent. Uh, in the foray, Earth lies a huge loser. We laid that massive of fives, and that's now six to four. We're not in a good position there. So hopefully, if Love does get pulled out, they'll offset the losings that we'll have on Earth. Like that one goes in, uh, and then in the Abbe, make a challenge we've laid the Irish uh, charge. We, we've had that, that, that eight, and, and that was last night and this morning. Um, that, that's now seven to one. Pope's been in really good form, um, and Batash's favourite there, but that's been drifting. So I'm not sure if Batash is going to go. It, it, it looks like the uh, ground's going to be really soft, isn't it? Yeah, the ground coming up pretty nice for Make a Challenge, who uh, rarely actually leaves Ireland because he does get his ground here regularly enough. Mm. How, how was the weekend for Star Sports in the racing front? Uh, in, in terms of the weekend, uh, the, the big race was, uh, was the Cambridge Shed, but the uh, bogeys in that race with Derivo, Tempest, and Sinjari. So that was a great result with the 40 to 1 shot winning. Um, and I just, I just want to talk about high definition quickly. Now, favourite for the dark. What a Next performance! Year. The only thing, the only thing that might stop this horse is that he might actually want further than a mile and a half because it takes him so long to get going. But you know, the people, the, those who back in running, back in the, the runner up, stepping up to a mile for the first time at one oh one, and he ends up getting beaten three parts of a length. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought he was uber impressive. I mean, when you watch it, it just looks like a derby horse. But, but mm. I mean, it's short for the derby now, eight to one with us. Um, is uh, that short though? Yeah. I, I think that's short. Do you, do you really want to take eight to one about about horse that's going to be running in the Derby next year? No, thanks, not for me. I'd rather find an eight to one shot on on the day. Really, going to get um, five and tens off you now when we finish this conversation. <laughs> well, I'm sure we will have a conversation about that. <laughs> um, so it's yeah, eight, eight for the Derby and sixteen for the, for the Guineas next year. I wouldn't touch him for the Guineas. 
mm-hmm. uh, because he, he, he does just look like a big old horse who, uh, who really, really wants to get that trip. But I think the derby will be nailed on for him if he's well balanced when he gets a bit older. Speaking of the derby, the Star Sports Greyhound derby, we need Julie Collier to tell us she cannot believe that it's upon us because Julie has been buzzing for this for weeks and weeks and weeks. And what's the market looking like? Yeah, it's finally here. The Star Sports Greyhound derby starts uh, this Friday with the heats getting kicked off. Uh, new in session is the favourites, 9-1. to one. But I just want to spin through some of the anti-post uh, liabilities we have so far. Uh, so Dean Ridge Rapid uh, is our biggest liability. Um, 125 that was, and that's now 22s. Um, Gilo Josh, 125s now 50s. Uh, Dean Ridge Sirius, 80s now 16s. Uh, Blue Tick George, 150s now 50. Uh, Jumeirah uh, Sprite, 66 is now 33. And Arsene Five was also a loser for us, but that doesn't, uh, that, that doesn't run uh, due to injury. Did come back and have a trial, but it can't get him back fit enough to run, I believe. Uh, was 25s, that was about all the way down to nines. That was jolly, but that one's been pulled out. Um, and then Ewing Session is also a loser for us. So those dogs are the ones we won't uh, want to win the Greyhound Derby who gets kicked off this weekend. Yeah, keep an eye out uh, for the Greyhound Derby market, which will obviously be involved. And just before you go, Flynn, what's it like mm. as somebody who goes to the track uh, regularly? What's it like, the morale among the, the on-course layers? It's something I'm quite worried about in, in Ireland in terms of these people who basically have been forced not to work since March at this stage. And, you know, I know it's not easy for them. What's it like over there? It's really, really tough. I mean... For, I'll, I'll be completely honest, for us it's not horrific because obviously we've got the office, we've got the um, laying bets on the phone, the website, the app, etc. So it's, it's, well, yeah, true. Yeah, it, it's, it's, not our, it, it's not our sole source of income. So I really feel for the guys that that's their bread and butter. They have to go every day and that is their living and now they can't. And when you look at some of the restrictions and how can you have people being allowed to go to theme parks off Fort Park or Towers and and, and, and they can't safely arrange for some, some form of public to go to a race course. It just seems mad to me. Um, so I do feel for them guys, and the morale is just horrifically low, just not knowing when, when it's going to end, unfortunately. Top man, Flynn. Great to talk to you. Cheers, Johnny. That was Trader Chat, and we'll talk to you next week. Mm-hmm.